We need to simply speak the truth and stop being cowards and address the issues. There are people running for office that believe any period of that process of development. Today's video is a great interview with Jack Hibbs and Charlie Kirk discussing the future of America and breakthroughs in 2024, a year predicted to be tumultuous with important events taking place. Along with the above point of view Robert F. Kennedy Jr. raises issues related to economics, politics, corruption and calls to take back the country to turn the situation around. Over the last five years, our country has become something unrecognizable. Journalists have exposed a massive censorship complex. Federal agencies like the FBI, the IRS, the Justice Department, and even the Secret Service have been weaponized against political opponents. We're subject to constant surveillance. The government wraps itself in lies and secrets. Corruption is pervasive within the regulatory agency and the halls of power. There's only one thing that can turn this all around. And if you thought I was going to say that it's me, you were mistaken. That's not something that I can do alone. But if enough people want to reclaim our country, I can be your instrument. I'll be the sledgehammer that the American people will wield to smash apart the corrupt merger of the state and corporate power. Look at the problems we are dealing with today compared to our capabilities. It's beyond imagination. But our God can do whatever needs to be done. He is power over all things. Jesus is coming back. He's the king of the world. We know how that story ends. But I do not want to see unnecessary suffering. I do not want to see the cascade of darkness or evil for something that we could have prevented. And I will make the contention against any pastor, against any activist on the left, or, which sometimes unfortunately is synonymous, is America falling will not be good for anybody. It's not good for the gospel. It's not good That's for right. yeah. you know, the poor of the world. It's not good for the poor here. America is a covenantal nation, a benevolent superpower founded on eternal promises and eternal principles. That's right. And the American people, divine, I think, filled with the spirit and a spirit of action. We can bring this country back. There's so much life. There's so much vitality. We are a rocket ship waiting to take off. But it's not guaranteed. And that's the one thing. I know a lot of speakers go around, it's just a matter of time, America's coming back. Or there's the doomsday. It's just a matter of time, America's going down. I'm actually the guy in the middle that says, it's wholly dependent that's exact... on what we do. I once heard a preacher say that it's time we stop telling God how big our mountains are and start telling our mountains how big our God is. Listen, I so agree with what you just said to this point. I don't believe that America's hope and recovery, if that's... What's to happen is going to happen through any political power. I've never believed that. People want me to wear that badge. I won't wear it. Remember, Air, uh, what did I say a long time ago? The Messiah is not going to be arriving on Air Force One. Just know that. And Jesus will never be on the ballot. Okay, he's not running. So here's the thing. Until he does come back, you're supposed to do the right thing. That's called being a Christian. That's called shining the light. Amen. That's called being salt. You can't sit it out. If you're an idle Christian, a spectator Christian, that's a serious problem. You got to change that. Everybody's got a theory. Everybody's got a slant. I'd like to suggest to you that there's one slant we should trust more than any other, one take we ought to prefer above all the other takes, one opinion we ought to value more than all other opinions. Amid the thousands of shrill voices that are being heard today, we need to listen to one voice, and that's the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you say, he doesn't have anything to say about the future. It may surprise you to discover that one of the longest messages of Jesus recorded in the New Testament was all about the future. All about your future. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke there is a section referred to as the Olivet Discourse. It is so called because Jesus answers the questions of four of his disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, while sitting on the Mount of Olives. Now, Olivet was the very place from which Jesus would soon go to heaven. And it's the same place to which he will one day return. I've been there. I've seen it. I get the chills every time I'm there. But even today it's one of the most breathtaking views in all of the world, especially when the morning sun casts its glow across the golden city with its haunting walls. 
limestone buildings, ancient monuments, its steeples, its spire, and its minarets. Dominating everything in this 38-acre powder keg known as Al-Haram Al-Sharif to Muslims and the Temple Mount to the Jews and Christians, this is Mount Olivet. And the message that Jesus delivered to his disciples on that historic day is the second longest message recorded of Jesus in the scripture. The only longer one is the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 through 7, and that was a public message given at the beginning of his ministry. This is a private message given at the end of his ministry just to four disciples, and these are the disciples when Jesus left in Matthew 24 to come to Jesus at this profound time in his life and say this. Listen to this, Master, look at the magnificent buildings we have. Look at the impressive stones on the temple wall. That's like you and I messing up everything in our lives. Not living for God and letting it enter the church and destroy the churches in a nature, but going around bragging about the buildings great that we have, and we have some beautiful buildings. Buildings. Did you know God doesn't care about our buildings? In the discussion that Jesus is about to have with his disciples, he will speak like a prophet. He will accurately predict the future of America and predict some of the things that will affect us and you can count on that. What Jesus said would happen would happen. The days are coming when the hand of God will move in astounding ways and if we know the word of God, we won't be taken by surprise. We will find ourselves not in panic, but in excitement about what we see the Lord doing. He wants to teach us about the future. He wants to transform us for the future and then most of all he wants us to trust him with the future and I think this is the most important thing for us in all of this. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month. But here's what I do know. I know the one who knows. I know the one who's in control. I know the one who sits above it all, who's not surprised by, you know, a little girl that came to me once said that Jesus never says oops. I like that because he never says. Oh my goodness, look what happened. Jesus is in control of it all. He's on top of it all. It's interesting that Jesus never did really answer to the disciples' questions fully. For instance, when they asked him, when are these things going to happen? He never told them when the temple was going to be destroyed. Jesus is not obligated to give us the answers to every single question we ask. What Jesus wants us to do in the midst of all the uncertainty we face today is to learn how to trust him and to believe that while I don't know the answer, I know Jesus. And Jesus knows the answer and I can trust in him. And learn how to trust in him when it looks like everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Jesus is still on his throne. Nothing has caught him by surprise and nothing will ever catch him by surprise. He is the sovereign God. And he is in control and you can trust him. You can trust Jesus in the midst of what's happening today, in the midst of what's going to happen tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.